Well, hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining Making Faith Moves. My name is Virginia T. Green, and I just love inspiring people and encouraging people to move towards their dreams and be their best selves and change some old habits and thoughts patterns and all this stuff that keeps holding you back from your best life that God has for you. We need to have the capacity to be able to receive what God has for us. And a lot of times we don't do the work to be able to receive that. And we wonder why things don't come to pass. But guess what? We are doing these interviews with powerhouse women who are helping you by sharing their story. And today I have a special guest, which I'm so excited about. I have Miss Rachel and I'm going to let her introduce herself and then we're going to get started. Yes, thank you so much, Regina. I'm so excited to be here today and just pour into your audience. And so my name is Rachel Best. I am a keynote public speaker as well as an author and also a empowerment mindset coach. And so I help people identify what keeps them stuck in their life to help move them forward in their personal and or their business life. And so we clean up past negative emotions of anger, sadness, fear, hurt, and guilt that is holding them back. And then they start to to see results in their life and they start to be able to move forward. So that is what I do. That's who I am. Beautiful, beautiful. And thank you so much for just, you know, taking the time to do this interview and be willing to share your story. I really appreciate it. There are many people that need to hear other people's story and what they've experienced and how they are, how they got where they are. And so I want to ask you, like, you're a mindset coach, you're a speaker, you mentor, how did you get here? Like, I know you didn't just wake up all of a sudden and say, I'm going to do this and, I, and you arrived. Like there was a journey, right? So tell me, how did you get to this place? Yeah, you know, that's a great loaded question um, <laughs> for, for a loaded answer, but yes. I will give you the I will give you the short version here. And yes. so, you know, I would say that my whole life has prepared me to hear to get me to hear. And, you know, mm -hmm. life, a lot of life happened. Um, yeah. It happened at one time. I thought it happened to me, but really, I've learned that it's happened for me. Um, okay. It has created me. It has created me to be who I am today. And um, God has placed things in my path. And uh, that's one that's one reason how I met you is we were in a in a, a company together several years ago. And yes. um, <clears throat> that was a pivotal a pivotal um, moment in my life that um, actually let me back up a little bit because it's been about 15 years ago. Um, I was in a really dark space in my life. I walked in the door of my house with my three children at the time, aging from six to 11 and uh, all of my husband's stuff was gone. He left oh, wow. us. Mm. Yeah. I had no idea that he, he, I later found out a couple weeks later that he had been having an affair and oh, wow he left us and, and he, he went to be with the other woman. They're actually still together 15 years later. And, wow. um, I, that was a lot that I had to learn to go through. I was in that stage of my life. I was a hot mess and mm -hmm. I did not have the personal development. I did not have Jesus at the time. I knew who God was, but mm -hmm. I, we didn't grow up in church. And yeah. so, in my life, you know, I thought Christmas was about Santa Claus. I thought e Easter was about the Easter bunny. And I thought that right. the rainbow, I thought the rainbow had a leprechaun at the end of it. Right. Like I had no idea until I was 28 years old, actually 29, I was 29. I had no idea until I was 29 years old that those all three had significant meanings to them. And so mm. I, after he left, I started doing a lot of really dumb, bad things and got myself into a really dark spot from decisions that I had made because history repeats itself unless we fix it. And oh, so, yeah. And so, which ties in together to what I do today. And like so, cycles, right. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> yep. 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 And so many levels. And yeah. so I, when I, um, where was I? Uh, break, oh, history repeats itself. Yeah. So I had gotten myself in a really, I was really depressed. I was in a dark place. I was making decisions that I shouldn't have been doing and making and not valuing who I was, not valuing myself. And I landed in my spot in a, in a really bad decision that um, I ended up making some bad choices. And, and I, in that, 
I walked into work one day. I used to do hair. I walked into work one day and I'm just sobbing. And my, my boss is like, Rachel, what's wrong? Like, what can I do? And I'm like, I don't know. And she's like, Rachel, when I don't know what to do. She's like, I go to the man upstairs. Mm. So my friend, my friend had been asking me to go to church. And finally I, it was a Friday and I text her and I was like, can I go to church with you on Sunday? <laughs> and so she's like, yes, I'll even pick you up. And so she came and picked me up. I only lived two minutes down the road, but she probably thought I'd bail on her. So she picks me, <laughs> she picks me up. I had been out to the bar the night before. I never had to drink to be dumb and make bad decisions. I could just go out and act just as just as ridiculous as the person drinking as, as you know, (laughs) anyways. So I go to church that day and that day, the sermon was all about, um, you have two paths. Mm -hmm. You can make, you can keep going down the path of destruction and, you know, losing your life, or you can go this way and you can make Jesus your Lord and savior and the way, the truth and the life. Mm. And the whole sermon, I'm like, I think he's talking to me the whole entire sermon. <laughs> and so um, at the end of it, you know, I, I'm bawling and I asked my friend, I'm like, they did an altar call. And I said, will you go up there with me? So I go up there with her and mm. I gave my life to Jesus that day, March 18th of <laughs> 2009. And wow. um, ever since then, I've just said yes to God, one yes at a time. He mm. tells me I'm, I'm your open vessel do with me what you want. I'm your mouthpiece yes. and just, just bring me where you want me to go. So that yes. was really the start, the start of everything that has, that has gotten me here. Oh, wow. Wow. That is a hard thing to deal with. Like, were you able to sustain yourself in that period when your husband walked out on you? So in that, in that time, it was about, um, maybe it was almost six months after he had left. I was a hot mess. Like it was just, (laughs) life was a wreck. Like I like, I I share this with people that I felt like I was in the bottom of a brown paper bag and there was this little tiny pinhole at the top and I could barely see any light because I was in such a dark place. Mm. And yeah. So in, in that time, I just, because I kept, because I was seeking the world to fill me Mm. and I just kept getting further and further and further down in the pit. And then when I gave my life to Jesus, um, it was, it was a good couple years that it really took me to finally get it. Um, you know, find my way, you know, who, who, who is God and what, who has God made me to be and finding my identity in who he is and seeking him and not the world. Oh, I love that. That's just such a pivotal moment, like for all of us, no matter mm-hmm. how, where we are in our life is to find our true identity in God. Because a lot of times mm-hmm. we do find our identity in the outer things and it just keeps getting worse and it keeps getting yeah. worse and you're never fulfilled. And you're like, what is missing? And it's really mm-hmm. the God piece is Jesus. Like we cannot have fulfillment for real without mm-hmm. Jesus. And so I just want, because this is so good, like talk to that woman right now who's in that place. What would you say Mm. to her? Mm. What would you say to the woman who just experienced this thing or uh, getting ready to experience this thing? Maybe they're on the brink of a divorce. And Mm -hmm. what would you say to her if she doesn't know who she is and she's feeling like you were feeling? What would you say to her right now? Yes, that's a great question. What I would say to you is that this is just a very short season. This is a very short season that if you dig in to the word, seek your relationship with God, find good, solid, amazing Christian people that love Jesus, that can surround you and help you and help you get through this spot. Because on the other side, on the other side of this, this is going to be part of your story that you're going to be able to help somebody else walk through. And Mm -hmm. so that's what I would really have to say to that, that woman, because if somebody told me that, that, you know what, this is just a season, it's just a very short in the time in the time, it feels like, uh, it feels like it's forever long, but 
after now looking back at it and and realizing who I am and God and who mm-hmm. God has created you to be when you lean into God and when you lean into who he has created you to be you are so much more than that relationship you are so much more than that um whatever you're going through you're so much more than that and mm-hmm. you will get through this and you will on the other side and it will you'll be able to use your mess right now as your message oh that's so good you chose not to let that define you why Mm -hmm. yeah because I like I said I've I've learned that things that have happened in my life to me have happened for me so that I can now go out and share my story with people that are maybe as I keep sharing my story, I'm very in alignment with so many people. They're like, oh, I went through that. Oh, I went through that. And and some people get stuck there. They get stuck there mm-hmm. forever and they ruin their life. Yes. Five, 10, 20, yes. 60 years. And there's freedom. There's mm-hmm. freedom. You know, God doesn't want you to be set. He wants to set the captives free. He doesn't want you to be yes. in bondage. Yes. And so that's that's really where my heart comes from is that um, to help people to get out of bondage that you your past doesn't define you. Yes. And it was just a part of your past that is now part of your story. Now you get to share it. So my whole, my whole, the whole brand God has given me is how to make a mark in the world, finding your signature. So taking those things in the backpack, taking those things, those, your, your gifts, your talents, your life experiences, your, the things that have happened to you really for you, um, taking those, unpacking them, unpacking them, dealing with them, forgiveness, letting go. We have to let go and surrender, putting those things into our heart. And when we come, when we, when we deal with those things and we forgive and we let go and let God heal our heart and we put those things into our heart, then we can be a light to somebody else that is going Mm -hmm. through that situation. Yes. Oh, I love that. So you, you mentioned forgiveness like three times. And so I want to talk Mm -hmm. about forgiveness. How do you forgive like that? Someone who did you wrong, how do you forgive and move forward? Yeah. So (laughs) I learned that forgiveness is not for the other person. Forgiveness is for me. Because why am I letting somebody have rent in my head rent free? Uh-huh. And so when, when I learned that forgiveness, first of all, God forgave us, right? So yes. if God can forgive us for yes. all the things that we do. Why can I not? And, and, and unforgiveness will also, there's a couple things. One, it'll harbor in your body. It'll mm-hmm. harbor in your body. And it will cause different autoimmune diseases. It'll cause disease in your body. And so that's one thing. And then another thing with unforgiveness is if we don't forgive, then that really holds us back from stepping into the person that God has created us to be. So it really puts a barrier between you and God. If we Mm. can't forgive then, you know, God forgave us. So if we can't forgive, we are really harboring and putting a block in between us and our true purpose that God's created us to live. Oh, that's so beautiful. Uh, I hope that someone is really blessed by that because a lot of times just from working with women, it's hard for them to forgive. And that's Mm -hmm. some of the things that I know that you're working with women and helping them kind of release some of those old habits mm-hmm. and old things that's hindering them. So, and then you talked about making your mark in the world. You wrote a book. Congratulations. Yep, yep. That's exciting. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit about making your mark in the world. Yeah. Yeah. So like I said, like just kind of sharing a little bit what I already shared with you. Um, I, w- this book is about um, my story and where, where I came from, um, what I, the obstacles, the things I went through and then what's next in my life. And so I released this last year. And so I'm going to, I need to write another one because there's been so much that's happened in the last year that I'm like, <laughs> Oh, that's missing in here. I need to put some more in here. I need a 2.0 version, but yeah, it's really just a 
about, like I said, the, the taking those things, unpacking, how did I unpack those things? And how did I forgive and finding my identity in, in Christ and who he says I am? Um, because again, if we know who we are in Christ, that makes things a lot easier yes. than, yes. than, uh, living life without it, Absolutely. without and, Regina, I also want to say this real quick because, you know, so I've, I've found that there's a lot of Christians that don't know their identity in Christ and they don't know their authority in Christ. Yes. And that is, those are two big things that I have learned, um, over the last, gosh, several years now that my identity is always in him. Who does God say I am? I am loved. I am chosen. I am forgiven. I am righteous. I am, I am his, right? Yes. So when we really know who we are in Christ and then, and actually that's in Ephesians. So go read Ephesians and then it's all over the Bible, but you know, go read Ephesians. It is. But then <laughs> if, um, you, uh, if you know your authority, like in Genesis, God gave us dominion. And when I had those two light bulbs go off, I'm like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, like the things that, that people are struggling with right now, anxiety, depression, um, all these, all these things, oppression, all these things is because we don't know our identity and we mm -hmm. don't know our authority. And I see people yeah. sitting in church and I, I have friends that are Christians that yeah. they're stuck in such bondage because they don't know yeah. their identity. And so that's. That's another thing that's that's a part of this book is that just that's teaching so people like what is your uh, your identity and authority in who Christ who what God gave us. Yes, yes, and that is just such a big. Uh, it's so big, and it just makes me so sad to see so many have mm -hmm. been in the church for years or coming into church and they're getting ready to go on a ride of not knowing their identity, not knowing their authority. And it's just so sad. And I'm grateful for people like you who are putting it out there, helping people really come higher. That's the whole purpose of me doing these interviews is to help people come higher, to accelerate, mm. move forward, like break free. And I believe Amen. that your story is doing that right now. And uh, one of the things that came up to me when you were talking is shame. Mm -hmm. That could have, that could have caused shame in your life. That experience mm -hmm. that you just talked about, did that happen for you? Were you shamed? Did, did the enemy put shame on you? And how did you move beyond that shame? Because I know that there's somebody watching right now that maybe is ex experiencing shame. It's embarrassing. And, you know, I don't know how to come out of that. I don't want to be around people, which can go back to what, what you said, depression, anxiety, because uh, the enemy wants us secluded, right? He wants us to not be around people. Talk about shame yeah. for a little while and just tell us, did that happen? What did you do to come out of it? Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. Like there was so much shame wrapped up in, um, in, in that whole area of my life. And, you know, I feel I'm feeling led and prompted to, to share what got me there. Um, because I know this is a very prevalent thing right now that's going on in the world. And, um, and it's, it's very, it's very heavy right now. Um, so when I was 16, um, when I was 16, I had gotten pregnant and, um, I was, I was forced to terminate that pregnancy mm -hmm. and I didn't get the decision to make that. That's why I said history repeats itself. And so, um, I didn't get the choice. I, I was forced to do that. So I didn't have control over my body. So then when I got divorced and I was making a lot of bad decisions, I ended up finding out that I was pregnant and it wasn't my husband's. Mm. And so what I knew to do, because this is what I was, you know, oh, we just sweep it under the rug. We don't talk about oh, it. We oh, don't oh. ever talk. We just, we just do it and we don't ever talk about it. And we just have it stored in our brain. Right. And so I made the decision to terminate a second pregnancy. I made that decision though. And so after I made that decision to go through that, that, that termination um, of that pregnancy, that is really what got me on a slippery, slippery slope of depression. Uh, because mm -hmm. soon as I did that, like I was the one that walked in there. I was the one that made the decision. I was the one that terminated that pregnancy. Nobody told me to do it. 
I made that decision. And so the shame, the guilt, the regret, the like, I felt like I had a big old A on my forehead. Mm -hmm. Like everybody knew what I did, even though nobody really knew. There was only like two people that knew that I was there. Um, But I made that decision. And Mm -hmm. so, yeah, the shame part, um, the shame definitely was, that's Mm -hmm. when, when I gave, when I, oh my gosh, Regina, when I gave my life to God, like I remember kneeling down at the altar and just bawling and crying out to him and, and forgiveness and asking him into my heart. And I literally felt the lift off of my Mm -hmm. shoulders and I had to, about a year, it was, oh gosh, it was, it was probably about, about, about nine months later, I went through a, um, a weekend intensive, um, retreat to help me process all of mm. that. And it, and it, honestly, it was, it's been an all, it was an ongoing, I used to not even be able to tell that story without bawling. Mm. And so now I'm, I'm able to, I used to tell it from, a, from, from, a, um, a, a, from not healing, from pain rather than from healing. And so now I can share that from a state of healing. And so I've had to just, there's been layers and layers of that healing um, throughout the last 15 years, but you know, God, that's, that's, it's all been God. He has, he's lifted that shame off of me. And so that is how, yeah, that's how I've been able to overcome. And again, you know what? Sharing, like sharing when we shine light on things, when we shine light on things, that's Darkness when we moves. get the healing. Yeah. Yes. It, it doesn't, it doesn't have a straw. It doesn't have a hold on you anymore. And so yes. the more I share with people, the, the, the lighter it becomes. Mm. Oh, that's so good. That is so, oh. I mean, you just shared so much in that. And I just believe you just helped somebody who had an abortion or who was thinking mm-hmm. about having an abortion. Like, wow, <laughs> that is, wow. I, I pray that it that that really does touch somebody's heart right now to kind of, you know, release the shame, go to Jesus for, you know, mm-hmm. just the, the burden that you said was lifted from that. I, I can share, mm-hmm. like, I actually went to an abortion clinic. I didn't go through with it. Like, but even though I went there and sat there for hours, the doctor didn't show up. Right. And I believe it was just, that's how my story was supposed to go. The doctor did not Mm -hmm. show up and I ended up leaving. I lost money because I changed my mind and I didn't want to wait on the doctor to come uh, a little bit later to do. Right. But (laughs) even in me going there and making that decision to go there, the enemy had shame on me and I didn't Mm, even go through with it, you know? So I mean, I just know that the enemy tries to shame us with so many different things. And if we don't know that there is a out, there is a mm-hmm. way we don't have to continue to operate in those old lies and strongholds mm-hmm. and things that's holding us back. Oh, that's why I think this is this is really, really good. So thank you so much for sharing that story. Um, yeah. How did you get to where you are right now? Like, I know you went through your phase of, of your husband leaving you and you found Jesus. What's next? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I am, like I said, now I'm a motivational uh, keynote speaker. I am a, um, an author and a coach. And so where I'm at now is I want to help people that have to help them overcome those past negative emotions, to get rid of them, to let them go, to be able to walk in their true purpose. And so that's really what, what, where I'm at now. Um, I went through a whole bunch of education over the last several years. I've just been a heavy student over the last several yes. years. Um, you know, just digging into. Right? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Every day I'm learning. Every day I'm learning and growing. And Absolutely. so we're not learning and growing, we're dying. So um, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's really where I'm at now is just, um, my passion and my heart is to just help other people to release and let go of those things that are not serving them anymore. And in the, in the future, my, my big audacious goals are to, um, have a, uh, retreat house to be able to bring a small group of people together and, um, just let them just go through the process of, of release, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be, right. it doesn't have to be my story. And yeah. so, you know, there's so many people that need that release and so that they can, and to teach them to walk in their identity and their authority in Jesus. Yes. So. I love that. So let me, let me 
me touch on personal development, mm -hmm. spiritual development. Mm -hmm. I know that there are a lot of people that are Christians that watch watch me and watch, is going to mm -hmm. watch this. Personal development and spiritual development. Do you see a separation there? Because there are a lot of people say, well, we don't need to do personal development. We don't need to, you know, do this. All Our spiritual development is everything. What are your thoughts around that? Yeah, I believe that we have to do both. And so like we have the domains of life, right? And so I have I have my faith walk and I have personal development in there. And so <laughs> I think that that's really what creates a whole of a person because we have to have our faith and we have to have our 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 Jesus, right? We have to be learning and growing in that aspect. And then personal development um you know, they just really go hand in hand. And that's what yeah. I love learning and coaching people is that I, Jesus is the foundation. And then I just marry them together. And then, you know, if you, if you have both of them, if you have, if you just have personal development without Jesus, like, eh, but I mean, you could probably have right. Jesus without the personal development, but mm, I don't know, like you have to be, you have to be learning and growing and, and yeah. uh, pursuing who God has created you to be and just fixing yeah. those those things in our renewing our mind renewing yes. our mind every single day and yes. just learning and yes. so yeah i think they go hand in hand i think they're both Absolutely. very vital yeah mm -hmm. yeah i feel like personal development is more of a walk it out type of thing like let's let's mm -hmm. take these action steps as i learn and grow let me move mm -hmm. by faith like the bible tells us to and take some actions so that mm -hmm. we can begin to change a lot of people think oh i pray to jesus and i don't have to take any steps i just sit here and just wait on jesus to come and just make all these changes but then i don't think we'll learn from that so yeah mm -hmm. that's really good that's good so um i think we've touched on a lot what would you any words that you'd like to share with someone who don't know feel stuck that's the word mm -hmm. feel stuck don't know which way to turn um looking for a way out what would you mm -hmm. say to that individual right now yeah, well, I would say one, set aside time and just dig into the word, spend some time with Jesus asking him, okay, God, where is it that you want me to go? Because it's right. It's very clear in the Bible that he will tell you where, which way to go. He will tell yeah. you if you yeah. take the time to spend with him, he will tell you. Mm -hmm. And so first of all, that I always go to Jesus first. That's my number one. And yeah. second find other solid Christian people that you can like you like me that are yes. solid in the word and in our faith with God and ask for help, ask for guidance, ask for, Hey, can you come alongside me and pray? This is, I'm, I'm trying to figure this out. Can you come alongside me and pray with me? And, you know, when we're part of the picture, we can't see the frame. And so mm -hmm. when we go to somebody, a mentor, a coach, a, you know, person like that, we can, and in conversation, we might be able to, like, I can help, like, if you were talking and sharing some things, I would be able to say, okay, well, what do you think about this or what, you know, yes. so we, we can bring up those things that, um, that you, that you might be missing and be yes. able to help you, uh, awaken to some of those things. So that's what, that's really what I would say is go to God first and then find solid Christian people to come around you and help you. Oh, that's, that's good. That's good. I hope that you all are taking notes and writing down. <laughs> um, any last words that you'd like to share? Um, well, I think maybe the last thing I would want to say is that I always like to share this with people because I know in my life, as I've been, as God has been bringing me into this space right here, um, I'm a big dreamer, big old audacious dreamer. And there's been times yes. that I, <laughs> that I haven't <laughs> had people to support the dream that God has put into me. And I've had mm -hmm. people, you know, in my ear saying, you know, maybe you should go get a job or do you think this is really something you should be doing or. Or, you know, they were just not supportive. And something that was told to me that really gave me the hope to keep persevering, keep going. And the call that God has called me to do is that nobody has to see your vision because God gave it to you. God yes. gave you that vision. God gave you that purpose. 
God gave you that assignment. Mm. And so nobody else has to understand it. Mm. Only you and God need to understand it. And then find the people that are also just as crazy to think that they can also make an impact and create that big yes. audacious goal. So that's, that's the I last thing that. I would like to share. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you shared that because you know, when you're first on that learning journey and that personal development, when you decide that I want to change it's mm-hmm. you think that there's nobody else out there who thinks like you, you think that mm-hmm. they're not out there, but there, mm-hmm. since I stepped into this, into this world, there is tons of people who dream big. And so yeah. do not let the thought that there is nobody else out here who believe. And it may not be the people that you're close to that's going to believe. It's going to be strangers sometimes. You know, you and I met. We met through our personal development. We met through our the company that we were a part of. And there were a lot of big dreamers there. I'm like, wow, this is big. I mean, there are mm-hmm. so many people out there who really do believe and uh, dream big. So don't let that mm-hmm. stop you uh, if you are watching this. So thank yeah. you. Please tell the people where can they find you? Uh, share your book again so that they can pick yes. it up. Where can they buy yes. it? Where can they catch you on Instagram, social media, whatever you have, whatever accounts you have? Yes. So, oh my goodness. I'm on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. I'm like on almost all the platforms. Um, it's under Rachel Best is my my name. And then I also have a website, uh, rachelbest.com. And then okay. this is my book. Um, if you would like a science copy, you can just um, find me on Facebook and or even text me at 567-204-9086. That's my business number. And um, you know, if you want to, if you want to grab a book, a signed book, just let me know and uh I will I will get that for you. So that's how you can find me, follow me, and get a hold of me. (laughs) Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Rachel, for sharing your story and encouraging and inspiring people to grow. I really appreciate it. You just taking this time. Thank you. Yes, you're thank welcome. You. And thank you all for watching. That is it for today. I appreciate you. I pray that you are blessed. If you are looking for help, you Rachel has given you her information. If you want help from myself, you can find me at virginitygreen.com or you can find me on all platforms at Virginity Green. So thank you again and you have a wonderful, wonderful day.